Paul Michaels, Real Dog Training. Had a pretty mad weekend. Uh, well, I actually started last week uh, rounding up the deer dog boot camps and uh, been taking dogs hunting and um, had a, one guy up from Wellington who his dog's been here doing a boot camp and done a couple of days hunting with him, um, taking him and his dog out and showing him how everything works with his dog in the bush and uh, we just hunted in the climb wise and we shot a deer a day in the climb wise over his newly trained deer dogs that was pretty cool. Um, we had a bit of drama. I had a, a bull, I was shooting through a bit of knee cow and I had a bullet deflected just through this real light bit of knee cow leaf and I wounded a hind and we had a huge tracking job, we had to track this hind oh, for about an hour 40 and um, she wasn't really bleeding much and, and for quite a while we, we we didn't see any blood or a mark or anything and it turned into, actually turned into the biggest tracking job I've ever done on a wounded hind. I haven't tracked many wounded deer, um, not because I'm a good shot but because I'm quite careful about the shots I take. Um, and yeah, ended up tracking this deer for an hour and a half or an hour forty and found it right on dark, right at the top of the climb wise. Um, it turned into a huge day, but it was really cool. Uh, I mean, it was one of those, it was mixed feelings because I, I hate wounding deer. Um, but then when that unfortunate situation did arise, it was a great opportunity for this for Star, this, this Hungarian Vizsla that I've just finished training up, um, to do a really epic tracking job. And we ended up finding it, um, putting, doing a finishing shot on it. And um, it was just an epic track. Um, day before we went out for a hunt, um, shot another deer, all just public land, I think really challenging spots in the climb wise. Plenty of deer, but um, in there, but it's not the easiest hunting. Um, the day before that, I had Tess, or Tessa, a three year old GSP, German Shorty Pointer, and she was finished up a boot camp as well, and, and her owner went for the full package where I took Tess to the, our private hunting block which is just loaded with deer and um, just put, got Tess onto about 20 deer in, in one afternoon and then once she'd done everything perfectly I shot a deer over her and um, all that went really well. I had the camera there and we got a lot of footage both days. Um, both days, all three deer that we shot over the three days, uh, we didn't get the film the actual shooting of the deer but we filmed the whole hunt we've got heaps of cool footage of the dogs um, which it's just a matter of getting time now to upload it all and edit it and stuff it's been flat out um, but got heaps of cool footage there we've got footage of the deer and the dogs after the shot and stuff like that and heaps of cool stuff leading up to it we've got plenty of footage tracking around in the dark behind Star for an hour and 40 minutes and then uh, it was wet so I've got this camera that I'm using here it's a little Sony compact that I've been um, I, I mounted on my rifle and I've been getting some real cool footage with that the dogs hunting in that um, but all three days it was quite wet and this, this Sony compact isn't weatherproof um, at all it's just a normal compact camera that I'm mounted to my rifle um, and I haven't got, I've got one of these little guys GoPro um, that I've been getting, doing heaps of, getting heaps of footage of uh, training print, the pup that we're doing the GoPro with, the, the that we're doing the blueprint with um, and I'm also, we care, we've been carrying this around but I don't have this mounted on the rifle um, and all the times that the, the shot happened was, was quite quick and we didn't get it. Um, but we did get heaps of footage of this um, sneaking around behind the dog and then when we caught up with the one we were tracking, the deer we were tracking with Star, um, this thing ran out of batteries um, and it was right on darks before we caught, caught up with it. But we got some footage with the deer and stuff with the other camera. But anyway, waffling on here. Today's training video, I just had a question through Big Game Indicating Dog's Facebook page and it's a really common question that I get all the time. 
And it's at what age do I start hunting with my dog? Um, very difficult question to answer because there's so many... There is no right answer to that because every dog's different. It depends on how well you've trained it, how often you've trained it, how consistently you've trained it, how you've trained it, um, what level of training you are you are insisting on getting it to in this particular case before you go hunting, which is dictated by how you're going to start hunting. So whether you're going to whether you're taking the approach of starting on a long line and doing a little, little bit of finishing off training in the bush, which I recommend everyone does anyway, even if it's for the first one or two hunts, have the dog on the long line, just dragging a short, light, long line, you know, five or six metres long. I'm not saying take an untrained dog into the bush on the long on a long one, not by any means that that's just an absolute shambles. But if you have a fully trained dog that's walking in front, got a stop going, turn and range and everything all set up, having that dragging uh, a long line isn't a hassle, but and you, you won't have many trouble with it, much trouble with it getting tangled up and stuff, but um, Taking a completely untrained dog into the bush, especially you know, a high drive hunting dog into the bush and getting it on fresh deer sign with a long line on is just an absolute mess. It's just the dog's going, ranging around, around, around in circles, getting tangled up, and it's all too fast. Um, so, man, like the youngest I've ever taken a dog hunting and had it work really well was Fly, and I had her hunting at seven months old. Um, I got her at five and a half months old and trained her intensively every few times a day, four to six times a day for six weeks and she was ready and I started hunting her off the long line and it was good as gold but that's the exception. Um, I've had other dogs that, high energy dogs that aren't as biddable, um, that they're over a year old and have had 12 weeks of long line training. Uh, 12 weeks of intensive training and you still need a long one in, on them in the bush to keep everything tidy like you can do without a long one but some of those dogs if you take them into the bush without a long line you'll be they'll, their hunting will be messy it'll be busy it'll be all over the place you'll be overusing your commands You'll be having to give your stop command all the time, putting pressure on the dog, and it's all messy. And I've talked about practice not making perfect. Practice makes permanent. So if you go out there and do a lot of that stuff, that's what, what you're setting up, and you're going to make that permanent. So those type of dogs, having a long line on them is just a way of having that perfect practice keeping everything really tidy, not overusing your commands, using the long line uh, to put non-communicative training in place, which is stuff we'll be going over in the blueprint, like that's we'll teach them on one-on-ones and all that sort of stuff. Um, so there's no right answer to that. It's you take your dog hunting when it's ready. Um, Personally, I don't know of any cases where you can take a dog hunting before, say, six or eight months and really be getting any uh, constructive gains by taking it hunting that early. Um, generally, anything earlier than that, if anything, you'll be doing damage. Um, I started off Indy really, really young, but she was really good, uh, really biddable, and either she had a really good heel, and she done a lot of her early hunting in behind with fly out front, so she was just in behind on a good heel watching, and then at a suitable time, I would give her a little turn out front, 
and just keep chipping away working at her range her stop and go and turn and all of that and I shot a few animals over her out there but a lot of what she was doing at that age was all in behind just watching and learning um, and really even with her she's coming up 11 she's coming up 12 months old she's about 11 months old now um, and really she's only been at the stage for the last month two max that it's really constructive and worth taking her out hunting and, and all she's doing is learning and really moving forward you know so um, man if you if you get your dog out hunting before a year old that you, that's early and you're doing well um, most dogs should be ready to hunt by 12 months old but by by no means is it like if your dog's 12 months old you should be hunting by now because that's all totally dependent on how well you've trained it I a lot of people come to me for one-on-one -on -one stuff and to do boot camps and their dog's three years old and just an absolute shambles and there's no way they should be hunting so their dog's three and it's like no I man stop hunting your dog let's get all your control set up let's work on this for the next two or three months they'll be in the boot camp for six weeks and then I'll give them a heap of stuff to do after that and then we move on from there um, so a dog's ready to hunt when it's ready there's no set age, no set criteria, no set amount of training to do that you should have to do in our boot camps we can basically get any dog ready to hunt on a long line without being a shambles and you're at a point where you're hunting constructively within six weeks maybe we need to extend it to eight weeks for a real full-on case but in six weeks we can take a dog from like a dozen, it doesn't it barks in the kennel doesn't know how to sleep in a kennel at night it's got absolutely no ears off a long line um, this, everything's a shambles, we can get it to walking in front, all its commands, everything set up off a long line in a low distraction environment but the thing is you get that set up in that low distraction environment and when you're dealing with a high drive hunting breed like a Bizzler or a GSP you can work in that non-hunting environment for as long as you want, have it perfect for as long as you want but the first time you take it into the bush and get it onto fresh sign to a certain extent a lot of your training starts all over again and you have to show the dog that everything you've tr taught it to do outside of hunting so everything you've done in your low distraction environment in the training areas still counts when you're hunting and that's when like taking a dog into that private block that's just absolutely jam packed full of deer and just putting a dog in front of deer all day working with it on the long run. It's, it's the, exactly the same thing as what uh, shepherds do with uh, training sheep in a training pen with a long line, you know. Um, no really experienced shepherd that knows how to train a dog to a high level, a trialist or anything like that, just brings a pup up to six or eight months old, takes it into a big paddock full of sheep and says, way you go. It starts a lot more control with that. There's all the training without sheep, and then there's training with sheep on a long line and all of that. So a lot of this, what we're doing, is in alignment with that. Um, and yeah, the idea of training a dog in the absence of game or animals to a point where the first time you introduce it to animals, it's 100% ready. That idea uh, can work in some exceptional cases with real biddable self-controlled dogs but generally uh, starting them off on a long line is a good idea and you can get them to a point without game to where you can hunt them on a long line with a round game and it's easy the dog is pretty much doing it all and the long line's just there as an insurance policy and just to keep them a little bit in check um, you obviously do using it the right way you've got to know how to use them a, a long one properly um, yeah 15 minutes that's it 
that's the video for today. It's been flat out. Of, and I'm having issues with internet connection. Uploading videos is a mission. Um, but yeah, I just keep chipping away and trying to make them as often as I can. Um, been crazy busy over the last few days, but got a bit more time coming up over the next week or so. So I try to get making them more consistently. Done.